Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm coming to you with an Armada fleet build going over squadrons. Specifically, we're going to talk about Rebel Bomber based squadrons today. So the first one uh, I want to talk about as I'm using Ryan Kingston's fleet builder again uh, is basically my, uh, my kind of my go to Rebel Bomber build, which involves B-Wings and Luke and uh, HWKs and uh, and in this one you know I, I, I have Nora Wexley she's one of the newer um, newer ships but she's kind of nice to give you know your squadrons an extra ability to be able to, uh, to you know take out extra shields so in case your bombers are attacking a heavily shielded zone their crits do even more damage so that's great um, but I, basically, I like to do a lot of B-Wings, and I'm going to go over some of the ships that kind of make this build work. But I also have Skurgs in here as well, um, and I have two and two in this particular build. I have 134 points of squadrons here, but you can totally change this up. I've run all Skurgs before, and I've run all B-Wings before. Skurgs are more expensive, but honestly, grit is huge for them. Uh, and, and it's really, really nice. And they're faster, so they have more maneuverability, and they're tougher. They have more hull. Uh, they're not as good against other squadrons, though, so Skurgs are really, really great. Once you get past the enemy squadron threat, they become much more dangerous. But B-Wings are a little bit more well-rounded while being slower. They're the slowest, uh, tied for the slowest squadron. Um, I have X-Wings as my escorts, so that's uh, a given, you know, because they're already bomber also, and they're very good against squadrons, and they got the red die for, for that. Uh, you know, Luke is especially amazing uh, because his crits go through. Um, I'll be using Dodonna in this build. Uh, this isn't a full build because I'm only at 345 points. I'm leaving some you know, ability for you to add your own stuff uh, and, some, and change this around. Um, I have two HWKs, so I have, you know, two two versions of intel uh here so i don't have to you know in case one gets unlucky i still have another one and it's always nice to have but you don't have to you can you know if you've got enough escorts you can get by with just one but i don't have a ton of escorts here so i wanted to have a little overlap um but i could change this around and drop the skurgs and make it all b-wings free up a few points or more vice versa um but and, and you know sometimes you can use y-wings too i just don't usually use Y-Wings as much. I like having two dice on my bombers. I really, really like having two dice. And uh, and so so that's good. So let's look at some of the ships that I would have in a build like this. Um, I'm going to let's zoom out a little bit. There we go. All right. Uh, so the GR-75 transport is very, very good um, because of Bomber Command Center. And when I'm rolling two dice on a B-Wing here, I'm black and a blue, I'm going to want to be able to re-roll one of them because that black might come up blank and I have just as much of a chance of it being a hit crit as it does of being a blank. So I definitely want my re-rolls. Um, I like to put Bright Hope just because I want it to stay sur to, to survive. I have Dodonna on there. It doesn't have to be on there. I just, um, you know, he's not the only commander you can use with squadrons. Sato works really well, or depending on the fleet you're building, you might want a different commander. But Dodonna is by far my favorite commander in the game, and uh, he works very, very well with squadrons or in every build, but especially with bombers, uh, especially, especially, especially with Luke Skywalker. If you're able to get Luke Skywalker in there, drop a crit right through shields and maybe you know I've pulled uh, a crit that completely eliminates their top shield zone before and uh, it's it's pretty spectacular uh, on the GR 75 I like to also put Adar Talon and because yes I have you see uh, there's a Yavaris in here and I'm going to talk about that if you're not familiar with Yavaris but one of the things I love to do is to be able to activate for example Luke or if not Luke then then a B-Wing or one of my one of my double die bombers uh, but primarily Luke and I like to move him hopefully within range of bomber command center uh, hit my opponent then Adar Talon Luke and then uh, then later on when I activate the Nebulon after the GR-75 I can activate Luke twice because I've already moved you know I've already gotten Luke into position uh, that's generally what I want to be able to do and, uh, and, and it works really well on, I've run at least these two, this GR-75 and this Nebulon in this way before. So this, this Nebulon with Yavaris, I'm using the Escort Frigate with a squadron value of two. Yavaris says each squadron that you activate can attack twice if it doesn't move, so that's huge. Um, but the, the key here to make that all work is I use Fighter Coordination Team. So I, Flight Commander says, all right, I can do my squadron command after I move. 
okay fine so I, I move and then after moving both of these are after I move so I can choose and then fighter coordination team allows me to uh, m you know move my unengaged squadrons up to distance one after I move so like it works really well with B wings which have a smaller movement but I can get them into position and then they can activate during the squadron command and shoot twice because the movement from fighter coordination team is before I activate them so it doesn't count as uh, having moved during this activation uh, so that's uh, that's kind of the trick here for uh, Yavares and it works really really well with B-wings but it works well with you know any squadron but especially bombers especially double die bombers so the Skurg and the B-wing both really really like that um, uh, now I also included an assault frigate here he doesn't have to be in this build but I did want to point out that assault frigates are a particularly nice ship to put rapid launch bays on because of their higher speed they can go up to speed three uh, and then they can carry three if well, the mark B can carry the mark 2b can carry three squadrons so you can load up three you know three B wings on on an assault frigate and and drop them uh, at distance one and you can even I didn't put this on here but we can even add uh, flight controllers on this guy and just in case we need to if we have to deal with enemy squadrons if I have B-wings loaded up that turns them into four blue die B-wings after I drop them just in case like if my opponent has a really good defensive screen and I need to deal with them before I can bomb uh, you know if you have to you have to but you don't this isn't mandatory for the build uh, ideally you want to be able to drop them somewhere where they're not you know not engaged with another squadron and they can just they can just do some damage but so I'll take those off for right now but it is a nice option and uh, but it's 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 hard to put a lot of those I tried to run a couple of these on a build one time and realized I only had one because it comes in the victory expansion and while I've or I've bought a couple of core sets and have a, a ton of victories I only had bought one victory expansion so I wanted more of those um, so this is one one rebel build that Esque, you know, it's not the full build because you can, like, in, if I were running this, I'd probably drop this guy and add a couple of TRC 90s to get some more ship based firepower as well as a lot more activations. Uh, but there's also, let me skip over to this, uh, another Rebel Squadron build that I've seen before wave five was just jan and a bunch of x-wings and it's gr it's you know simple and crazy effective because the x-wings surround jan jan allows the x-wings to you know ignore the enemy squadrons that are near them and anybody who shoots at an x-wing uh, jan can brace it doesn't matter which x-wing they shoot at jan can just brace it and uh and that's really huge and even accuracy can't target it because they're targeting the x-wing they're not they keep not accuracy in jan's uh tokens so that's huge but when you add bigs into this mix bigs allows you to further mitigate this damage so you know basically you, you, they're going to have a much harder time just focusing down one x-wing at a time it can brace uh and then and bigs can redirect the damage now if they you know, and ideally you'd want to keep bigs kind of a little bit further in the back, uh, but this way you can kind of shift your X-wings around and really force your opponent to, you know, to do damage to this one and then that one and that one, and you'll have all your X-wings damaged but still alive at at the end of a huge uh, battle. And then you still have, you know, and hopefully you win because you do have a lot of anti-squadron dice here, um, and then you're free to run wild on your opponent with all these bomber X-wings. So this is a nice, uh, you know, and this is only 90 points right here, uh, and so that leaves, this leaves a lot more room for ships. So if you don't want to go, you know, spend all 134 points of, uh, you know, on your squadrons, this is an, a, a much cheaper way to go that's still very dangerous and very effective. Um, I also wanted to talk about some other newer options here. Um, I, I have Luke here again, but he's specifically because I wanted to talk about Hera. Uh, Hera is incredibly expensive, so she doesn't always work, but she might work if you were only going to go with maybe these three. Okay, uh, so if you had Luke and Kian Farlander, for example, um, she could give both of them Rogue. And so that's really nice. Although if I was going to do this, I'd probably have at least one other non-rogue squadron in case somebody dies. Then Hera can potentially help that person. Like maybe a Jan would be nice here or something like that. But uh, yes. Uh, but I also want to talk about the Lancer. Uh, the Lancers are really, really nice. And this came out with Wave 5. Um, it's a really nice bomber. It's only a single die bomber, but it is the black die. Although Ketsu Onyo, the named version, she does get uh, two dice, but they're two blue. So it's you still can only max at two damage from them, unlike the B-Wing, uh, you know, where you can, or the Skurg, where you can potentially get three. Um, but 
but they make up for that by having rogue and grit and that's so powerful so grit basically lets you move so if you are engaged with only one ship you know you can move and hopefully move just out of range and still shoot the same ship that you're engaged with and it's just you know that really makes them much more difficult to deal with their only real weakness is the fact that they've only got four hull, which is a little bit light, um, but it's still not too bad. But they can be killed fairly easy, but not terribly easy, and they more than make up for it with all of their uh, key, uh, be, uh, keywords. And Ketsu, in particular, is much tougher because of her defense tokens, and she's got you know another squadron with scatter, and that's just huge. And she has a particular uh, nuisance to enemy squadrons as well. So she's just fantastic, but also very, very expensive. Any squadron over 20 points is is particularly expensive. And this, this particular setup I have right here, and this is just one Lancer, is already 105 points. And that's only five squadrons. So I'm not saying that you should put all of this. I just wanted to talk about some of the newer things that we got um, that can really help a bomber build. Like you might drop, you might not run Lancers at all, and you might just run Hera and, uh, and, you know, and maybe a couple of B-Wing. And, and these two and, and, and also key in Farlander is particularly like he's my favorite bomber although he's very very expensive but he's got two black dice and so you can roll potentially four damage which is huge although I mean although generally I think three is better because if you roll four you know two you know black crits so you got four dice showing your opponent's going to brace you know, nine times out of ten you know they're going to brace if they can so that's why like three damage is just as good because if they're going to brace it's still going to be two damage plus that crit so while Kian is awesome he's not necessarily like he's better against ships that don't have brace because you know that's that's just huge uh and then how he also doesn't really need bomber command center potentially either so so very very strong character here um but also very expensive but yeah that's just a couple of different things but now like the main two types of builds I typically will run if I want to go with bombers is um, basically you know, and, and they always have stuff like this I'm almost always gonna have a Yavaris uh, or an Adar Talon or both and I you almost always run to Donna but uh, and bomber command center is usually usually required but in sometimes there are a few times where I will forego it but um, but yes, definitely. I usually run this. I mean, there are other bombers out there like Y wings, but I just generally tend to not use them as much. But they are kind of cheap. They're only 10 points, and they have a lot of hull. They're harder to kill. Um, you know, so Y wings are not bad, but they require you know a slightly. They require a little bit more help because they have heavy, and they need a, a, you know a little bit more help dealing with enemy squadrons that, that wouldn't want to come and tie them up. So you still need to invest in X wings, and you still need to invest in. Um, HWKs with Intel to keep them moving. So there, there is that. But yes, guys, that's uh, that's basically uh, you know a couple of Rebel Bomber builds. And uh, you know, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think and uh, give this video a like if you liked it. And as always, guys, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Uh, I want to thank you guys so, so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day.